if you know you want to give your heart to the Lord, That's no one is looking easy. except God. Put your hand up and stand up right yeah. now. Hallelujah. I see someone back there. Yes, bro. God loves you. Yeah. You can just feel like they're like, this is happening in Vienna. The whole place is in Austria. The people are naked. Close them. fear of the Lord never ever ends. I'm asking that you would do this with Todd, but Lord, this would come upon the people that he ministers to. Yes, Lord. That the Holy Spirit of the fear of the Lord would come upon their lives. And I ask this in Jesus' name. The confirmation of the gospel was signs following. The Bible says, these signs will follow them that believe. Who here is a believer? And this doesn't just work in an arena. This is as you go. Preach the gospel. Jesus said pure religion is caring for orphans and widows and keeping yourself unspotted by the world. And that's really powerful. So if you think about it, like orphans are the body of Christ that doesn't know their sons and daughters. And a widow is somebody that's lost her husband. But a widow can also be the body of Christ that doesn't know her husband. And that's really important. So we need to step out, step up to the plate, and actually do what Jesus said to do. And that's love. Heidi Baker just preached on it. And it's about this. They'll know you're my disciples because of your love, because of what you carry. That word love isn't your phileo love and you care about people and and it's a physical love. That word love is an agape love, which is a supernatural love that comes from the Father. And by this, they'll know that we're disciples, that we actually walk in the agape love of God. I'm a good It's okay? This is very hard. It's okay. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. It's okay. Okay? Okay. Okay, bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Wow. Feel a lot of uh, yeah. pain. And yeah. She's hurting really bad. Yeah. Life is determining what yeah. she believes. Yeah. That's okay. It doesn't stop you praying, and it doesn't stop the witness from being real. Yeah. And it doesn't stop her back from being healed. Yes, and the Holy Spirit's a big boy, and so he can wake her up and say, that was me. <laughs> oh, she was really upset, hurt by the world. She was hurt by lots of stuff. But you can't stop somebody from praying for you. You can stop from laying hands on them. But it doesn't say that you have to lay hands on somebody. Jesus prayed for people. He prayed for the centurion. And his boy was healed from a distance. So when you're believing some, someone will be healed, if they're angry and they're like, no, I don't want you to, stand there and pray anyway. Like I teach my kids when someone says, no, don't pray for them. They don't want you to pray for them. As soon as they walk away, my kids grab hands and they pray every time. I remember the first time it was a really angry person in the mall. And Riley was really upset. My little girl, she was probably, she was probably four. She was, daddy, they wouldn't let me pray. And I said, well, let's pray for them right now. And she goes, okay. And I remember her little pout turned into a smile because she realized even if that person didn't want, her war is not against flesh and blood, it's not against the person. It's always against the, the thought process, the things that they're thinking. Our war is never against a person. It's against demonic strongholds and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So that person doesn't know Jesus and the only one that's going to have him know are more, believer, more believers and more believers and more believers stepping out being a hands and feet of Jesus, but also when someone says no, they don't mean no, they just mean they don't understand. And that's really what they mean. So we believe that Jesus would heal her. And I also believe that the Holy Spirit's a big boy and when she's not by anybody, because she likes to spend a lot of time by herself, because she had mentioned it's all about me and what I can do and the power that I have. I haven't seen any doctors and God gave me a word of knowledge about her back. So words of knowledge don't come and return void. To me, it's God's voice and God's voice comes it never returns void it's his word it's his truth and so I just believe her back will be healed and she has to deal with that somehow she'll have to mentally process that and she'll remember some guy in dreadlocks that even said she said don't pray he prayed anyway and she kind of just looked like okay but that's what love looks like people don't understand so we need to step out and be the hands and feet of Jesus 
without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be a witness. The spirit of fear will still have you. But when the Holy Spirit comes, you realize that God did not give you a spirit of fear. That thing came from the devil. And that spirit of fear is completely crushed with the spirit that God gives you, the Holy Ghost. I pray as you go. Yeah. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Brand new ankles. Amen. The Holy Ghost makes us unashamed of the gospel. The Holy Spirit empowers the Christian life so that you can walk with confidence everywhere you go. No longer will you fear Him, He'll fear you. He's not afraid of you coming to a building, He's afraid of you finding out what God says about you. This isn't about being strong and mighty, this is about being a Jesus freak and being in love with God and utilizing the reality of the Holy Spirit that He's given us, not to further your ministry, but to amplify the name of Jesus. It's for you. Here. Why? Because I want to bless you, that's all. No reason, you're standing up there. I didn't see a lot of people tipping you, and that's what you work for. Yeah. So I want to bless you, that's all, nothing. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Bless you, man, yeah. He's not happy with Jesus, bro. No. No, so give him money. He didn't even want me to talk to him. Good, no, 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 get away. So wanting to bless him and give him money, that's what he's working for. No, I was tipping him. And he's thinking like, we're taking away his people. That was really awesome. I just want to tell you that Jesus loves you, man. Jesus? Yes. Jesus liebt dich. Sprichst du Deutsch? Ja. Yeah. Ask him if he has any trouble with one of his shoulders. His right one Has, specific. Hast du uh, irgendwie Probleme mit deiner Schulter? Die from, from sports? Ja. Ja, ja, ja. It's, uh, as you have pain when you lift your arm. Hast du Schmerzen, wenn du den Arm hochhebst? Yeah. Sometimes. I heard it in my heart when I came up to you. Er hat gerade gehört, als er hierher gelaufen ist. Yeah. Sorry, let me pray for your shoulder. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for a brand new shoulder right now. In Jesus' name, right shoulder be healed. Right now, in Jesus' name. Ask him if it's warm. Spürst du eine Wärme in deiner Schulter? You should see. Probier's aus. I really, I really feel like music is a big deal to you. Ich spüre einfach, dass Musik was Großes für dich ist. And I feel like it satisfies your heart more than what you're doing. Und es gibt dir mehr Energie als das, was dir die Arbeit hier gibt. Yeah, and I think that uh, also you speaking into young people. Him speaking into young people. Und uh, du hast einfach eine Stimme für junge Leute. Trying to help them find their way. Und du möchtest ihnen helfen, dass sie einen guten Weg anschlagen. Because he likes to teach. Denn du liebst es einfach auch zu reden und Menschen zu führen. And he likes to help people. Und du liebst es Menschen zu helfen. Especially the youth. Und vor allem die Jugendlichen. Yeah, I think that would be great for you, man. Und das ist jede Situation unseres Lebens. Möchtest du das haben? I wish I could speak all that, sharing the gospel, man. Because he, he's not born again yet. I asked him if he wants to surrender his whole heart. Yeah, to Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Yes, Holy Spirit, we welcome you in the name of Jesus to come and let your presence rest upon our brother. God, I ask you to bless him and overwhelm him right now. In Jesus' name. Ask him what he feels. Feels like warm. Yeah. Bless you, man. It's nice to meet you today. Okay, you have problems with your neck? Words of knowledge are to hook people that God is real. Prophecy is to cut the hearts of men. Ich glaube, das ist für ihn schon ein bisschen eine Zerreißbrot. Du, du, bist, du bist ein Schlüssel für sein Leben. Danke. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? No, I just got a word of knowledge. Like... Yeah. Tell me, what, tell me so what's going on. I just had a, a word of Peter and it's a really good friend of his. Okay. And he's not really going with the Lord right now. I said he's a key. To reach his heart. Okay, so what's up with Peter? Um, was macht Peter gerade durch? 
as we're praying, the guy that's interpreting for me, he has this word, Peter, and he gives this word of knowledge and the guy broke down and he's like, ah, ah, he starts crying. I'm like, ah, oh, we got to get to the root of the, what's the deal with Peter? So his friend, he's like in a tough situation right now. He, he's dating someone and like, it's just very hard on him too, like, because he's really good friends. Okay. So when you say that's a key, that means that he, this is going to be healed. Is that right? I'm just trying to. I'm trying yeah, to hear. Yeah, I'm trying to hear yeah, what's happening yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay, we'll deal with that word so we can get through this, and then we'll pray for him again. So, just that's awesome. I always love words of knowledge, but make sure there's freedom right there in that place. Give me my You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, pray through that. Okay. So, because we don't want to leave, we don't yeah. want to leave no, him no, like no, that no, at all, ever. Dude, whenever there's a word of knowledge, I love them. When we're praying for somebody and you get a word and they start crying, that's awesome. But I've seen so many people like mention something and all of a sudden like that person leaves worse than what they came. I want words, I want to hear it. When I hear it, I want to know why I heard it, Yeah. yeah. what's it for, and let's deal with it now. The worst thing I could do is have that word come up, him cry, and then him walk away sick. And then him think somehow that had to do with my neck and it's not healed. And I thought I dealt with it. And then him get into a place of maybe I don't forgive my friend, but he really did. You know, and I've just seen it get yeah, yucky. Yeah, yeah, That's all. Course. I'm like, let's deal with it now. Uh, let's I, get it out. Like, like let's pound I, that I thing. just thought maybe it's connected to your Yeah, yeah, yeah. Injury. That's okay. That's why I... And I wanted to make sure that he knew that it wasn't. I just, I've seen people go fishing for stuff and leave them worse than what they started. Totally. And then I meet those people down the road and they're like, well, they told me that... I have this, and then my friend, and I'll never be healed, because I'm like, whoa, dude. And then we ended up praying, and it was almost completely gone. And he's been carrying that thing for, you know, over a couple of years, and almost all the pain left. It was so beautiful, man, so Jesus is king. 100% healing and wholeness. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cancel this assignment. We command it to be loose right now, in Jesus' name, 100%. Now, in Jesus' name, get out. I felt like a heat. Yeah. It was of good, tribal, like two times. Yeah. We're going to pray one more time, and it's leaving. With your life, the life that God gave you, your life doesn't belong to you. If you've given it to Him, then let Him have it. People are looking for somebody to follow. They're following stuff that's leading them to a pit. Step up and stand up and rise up and speak. Use your voice. It's becoming Christ-like everywhere you go. It's letting God speak to your heart about your value. And then you can see value in others. Because you know who He's created you to be, now you can see who He's created them to be. People say, well, I don't have the gift of healing. No, you're a believer, and these signs will follow them that believe. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, I never did it. Step out and do it. Worst that can happen is nothing. You got nothing to lose except dignity. And that's not a fruit of the Spirit. Anyway, you want to lose that one. I had a lot of fear in my heart and a lot of condemnation about it. Yeah, yeah. And I want to be right again. Okay, all right. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's not a 12-step program. I know. It's one step, bro. It's turning, changing the way that you think. The enemy just comes like that, man. And the only way out of that is repentance and changing where you're at. So you face God, man. Because he's not mad at you, but he wants you to be restored as a son. Where were you at when I was preaching last night? Where were you at in your heart when I was speaking? Uh, I don't know. Fear came into my heart. Okay, okay. See, that's called the fear of God. So the fear of God's coming into your heart because he wants you to be clean of all that stuff, bro. In a place of conviction like that, even if you're in a stadium and that fear comes, it's not the devil trying to make you afraid. It's God saying, I want all of you. And so all it takes is you saying, God, I don't want to live this way anymore. 
and we turn and face him and he restores everything. He's not mad at you, he doesn't want to beat you up. He wants to place the fear of God inside of you so that you love the things that he loves and hates the things that he hates. Come here. God says some sow, some water. God brings the increase. You're not responsible for increase. The pressure's off. Just sow. Jesus, Jesus, right now, right now. I am giving you my whole life back. I'm asking you to forgive me. Run the race, man. Step on the devil's neck every day. The word's alive. Get in there. It'll, it'll spark a fire within you, man. Coming forward saying he has not been with Jesus like he needs to be. And he's a youth pastor. And he's extremely convicted in his heart. So he repented and gave his life back to Jesus. And man, what is that worth? Like this guy's burning for Jesus. And if you could see his eyes when we got done, he was completely free, 100% clean, like loving the Lord. And it's just so powerful. The day after I went to see Bobby, the next day he died. My best friend in the world, bro. Like the only one that stood by me. But I listened to the wrong music. I gave him the wrong witness. I did, I got high with him, I partied with him, and then I told him about Jesus at the same time. There was no difference in my life than anybody else's life that was out there. If, if anything, I was worse than what I was before. And so his wife called me the, two days later and told me they wanted me to do the funeral and just speak at the funeral because I was Bobby's only friend. And like, that was the most devastating time in my life because I realized I could have witnessed, I could have shared truth with him, and then when I went away, my eyes opened, and I realized I was blind. And then I'm talking to him that day before he died, telling him I'm sorry, but he's in a coma. And he died the next day. And it hit my heart, and I had to speak at the funeral and look at his kids and tell his kids how sorry I was. But it's as easy as when you have friends around, not listening to the junk that you used to, because you're convicted that this isn't bringing life to anybody. And so for me, music is a huge deal, but that's one of the reasons why but I have a really strong conviction. So when I said, bro, what are you listening to? I'm gonna choke you out. I love you, but it's not acceptable, man, because of people that you're around, because you might be the only Christian around your friends, because we all have friends that aren't Christian. But if I'm doing the same things they're doing, if I'm partying with them, if I'm listening to the same stuff, if I'm saying the same things about girls that they're saying, there's no difference between my life and theirs. And the best witness that we have is to let this light that we have shine bright, bro, so that everybody around us can can see what we're really made of. So we went just to get um, some soft pretzels, went to talk to the lady at the counter and I had a word about her back being really bad and about sciatic nerve damage going down her leg. Do you have any trouble with your back? back yeah. You have pain? You do? Yeah, yes. I, I just had a word about her having pain in her back. Sie haben Rückenschmerzen? Sie haben Rückenschmerzen? Yes, and it goes in your leg? And you feel it in the bein. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, on your right leg. Right is bein. When she's at home, she has to put her legs yes. up and then it's, yeah. it's good for her. It's I'm the gonna, linke bein, the left leg. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to pray at that door. I don't want to interrupt because yeah. they have people. We talked to her, she said yes, we went to the side, we prayed, and she was overwhelmed. She said, I've never met anybody like you. Every bit of pain, let go. In Jesus' name. Ask her what she feels. Check and see, see. Bend. Is this good? No pain. Hey. Good. Yeah. And she kept touching my face, and I was, and I know what it is. It's Jesus. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. So it's so important that when someone starts to praise you, it's very important that you know that it's Jesus, that it's not you, and never ever take glory away from Jesus. He's so powerful. And if someone thanks you, just give it to him when you're alone. Here, Lord, this belongs to you. It's so awesome. Has she ever given her life to Jesus? Have you ever given her life to Jesus? 
Ich glaube, es ist in Ich bin Remisch katholisch. Aha, she is Catholic and ah. every Sunday she goes into St. Stephen, Stephen's Cathedral. Okay, so we prayed for her, she got completely healed, shared the gospel with her because she's Catholic. She goes to Catholic Mass but has no idea what it means to have relationship. Ah. Yeah. He, he would like to come and make his home inside of you. Und er möchte gern in dir drinnen leben. Through the Holy Spirit. Durch den Heiligen Geist. Yeah. Yes, would you pray with me? Möchtest du mit mir beten? Und, und Jesus in dein right Leben now. einladen. And so we shared the gospel with her and she got born again, gave her life to Jesus. I'm asking you ich bitte dich, to forgive my sin dass du mir meine Sünden vergibst, and come and make your home und dass du in mich hineinkommst, inside of my heart. In mein Herz. In mein Herz. I give my life to you. Ich gebe dir mein Leben, Jesus. And she said, I've never met anybody like you. I just want to thank you so much and kept doing this. We're actually sending someone back to the booth tomorrow because that girl needs plugged into the local church. Solche Menschen habe ich noch nie gesehen in meinem Leben. Yeah, no, she never met someone like you in her whole life. <laughs> but right now, Jesus has come. Through the Holy Spirit. Durch den Heiligen Geist. He healed her back. Hat Jesus hat deinen Rücken geheilt. There'll be no more pain. Du wirst keine Schmerzen mehr haben. But today he has come to make his home inside of you. Aber heute ist er gekommen, um er, dass er sein Zuhause in dir machen kann. And he'll never leave you. Und er wird dich nie verlassen. And he'll never let you go. She kept touching my face, yeah. saying, I've never seen anybody, never like met anybody you. like yeah. you. That's amazing, because all I am is a Christian. Then we started to walk away, and as we walked away from the stand, I really heard in my heart that that guy has a problem in the, his knee, his ankle, and his foot area. I gotta ask this guy real quick. Ask him if he has problems with his knee. And his foot. It's his ankle and his foot. Left under the foot. It's a, it's a heel spur. Ask him if it's a bone a stick, spur. A stick, yeah, it's it's like sticky. Uh, it's like. Uh, it's a bone spur. Yeah. Okay, come here. Okay, it's uh this this one. This one. It's okay. Just let me see. Watch. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I command this bone spur to disappear right now. In Jesus' name. Let him go. In Jesus' name. Check it. Ask him if there's any pain. Step on it. Tell him to step on it. In the name of Jesus, I command this to disappear now. Bonesburg, get out. In Jesus' name. Right now. Let go. In Jesus' name. In Jesu name. Step. It's gone. Tell him to stomp on it. Oh, we're richtig fest drauf stampfen. Step on it. Richtig fest. Step. Mais richtig. It's back, yeah. It's gone. Hey. It's gone. Thank you so much, man. Come on. Thank you so much. No more. Thank you. Are you a Christian? I am Muslim. You are Muslim. But, uh, not so. You don't practice. Friendly. But we prayed for him, and three times we prayed, and it completely disappeared. He was slamming his foot down on the ground, checking it, which was awesome. So I was a drug addict for 22 years. And 14 years ago, I didn't believe anything. I was an atheist, and I was with my girlfriend for nine years. I had a seven and a half year old daughter, and I went out and stole from the wrong drug dealer. Ich habe gestohlen von einem falschen Drogendealer. And he was in my car. Er war schon in meinem Auto. He shot at me. Und hat auf mich geschossen. And I had an encounter. Und ich hatte eine Begegnung with Jesus. Mit Jesus. I didn't believe. Ich habe nicht geglaubt. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Healed your foot. Hat deinen Fuß geheilt. It's not about religion. Es geht nicht um Religion. Mm -hmm. There is a God that loves you. Da gibt's einen Gott, der dich liebt. And he wants your heart. Und er möchte dein Herz. He wants your whole life. Er möchte dein ganzes Leben. Would you give your life to him? Möchtest du dein Leben ihm anvertrauen? 
Look at me. Schau mich an. He's the one that helped you today. Er ist derjenige, der dir heute geholfen hat. It's not about religion. Es geht nicht um Religion. It's about Jesus. Es geht um Jesus. It's not about trying to be above people. Es geht nicht darum, um über Menschen zu stehen. Jesus, you, you know him from birth as a, as a prophet. Jesus kennst du als Prophet von klein auf. But today, Aber heute he came kam er on your job bei eurem Job hier and told me und hat mir gesagt about your leg über deinen Fuß, so he could heal your foot dass er deinen Fuß heilen kann, to get to your heart. Um dein Herz zu erreichen. You're not a practicing Muslim. Du bist kein praktizierender Muslim. You don't know what you believe. Du weißt nicht, was du wirklich glauben sollst. But today, Aber heute God's come to give you peace. Ist Gott gekommen, um dir Frieden zu geben. Peace. Frieden. So you can be have peace here. Dass du da Frieden haben kannst. Because you don't have peace here. Weil du hast da oben nicht Frieden. The world like this. Die Welt dreht sich so schnell. God loves you. Gott liebt dich. Would you give your life to him? Möchtest du dein Leben ihm anvertrauen? I will pray with you. Ich werde mit dir beten. Yes? Uh, Jesus gehört zu Religion. Jesus ich liebe is part Jesus, of religion. ich glaube auch I love Jesus. Jesus, I believe in Jesus. Weil uh, wir haben 80% die Befehle auch von Jesus, im we Koran. Also in Koran, we have 80% of um, things that Jesus is I know. telling us. I know, I know. Ich weiß, ich weiß. There's a difference. Ohne Religion würde auch kein Jesus geben. Without religion, there wouldn't be a Jesus. I, I know. But with my life, Aber mit meinem Leben, I didn't meet religion. Ich habe nicht Religion getroffen. I met the one ich habe den getroffen, that died for me. der für mich gestorben ist. Well, I was as bad as bad could be. Obwohl ich so schlecht sein konnte, wie nur schle also well, ein I was, ganz schlechter Mensch. I was hurting people. Ich habe Menschen verletzt. I threatened to kill my girlfriend. Ich habe meine Freundin uh, ersch erschreckt, um sie zu töten. People are dead because of my life. Menschen sind tot aufgrund meines Lebens. It's that God dieser Gott, that looked at me der mich angeschaut hat and said, I love you. und gesagt hat, ich liebe dich. Allah is a lot of different things. Allah ist viele verschiedene Dinge. But love is not one of them. Aber Liebe ist er nicht. And God so loved the world. Und Gott hat so sehr die Welt geliebt. That he sent his son. Dass er seinen Sohn geschickt hat. I need that love. Ich brauchte diese Liebe. So that I can see you and love you. Dass so dass ich dich sehen und dich lieben kann. And not want anything from you. Und nichts von dir möchte. I'm asking you if you want eternal life. I shared the gospel with him and he wasn't ready to give his life to Jesus. Um, but I planted much seed and shared about the peace. And the, I asked him what he felt when we prayed again. And he said, I feel uh, really good inside. Oh, really, just really good. And I said, that's the peace that only Jesus can give you. And you have to believe that the Holy Spirit's going to be on that as seed and he's going to water that seed. And, and no matter what, I believe there's more Christians that are going to encounter him. Ask him what he feels. What do you feel? Uh, good just give food. A good, good yeah, feeling. Just give food. A very good feeling. It's called peace. And this nennt sich Frieden. Only Jesus can give you peace. Nur Jesus kann dir diesen Frieden schenken. He doesn't live in a church. Er lebt nicht in einer Kirche. He doesn't live in a mosque. Er lebt nicht in einer Moschee. He sits at the right hand of heaven. Er sitzt an der rechten Hand Gottes im Himmel. And he died for you to have life. Und er starb für dich und damit du Leben haben kannst. Are you sure? Also bist du sicher? You won't pray with me. Du möchtest nicht mit mir beten. We're going to send people back to their witness again. So I believe that, that in the next day or very soon that he's going to give his life to Jesus. Remember to reach out and remember to step out and touch people because it's only a matter of time until people come to Jesus if you plant the seed and believe that that seed is going to grow. Because when we sow seeds, we sow in faith. Because when I'm going to sow a seed, I don't want to just scatter it. I want to direct hit from the Holy Spirit where their heart is touched, to where their lives are changed, and he has to continue checking that heel. He'll go home tonight, take his shoe off, and check and see that it's really gone. And he's going to remember that guy that came that's in love with Jesus, that he talked about Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I believe that Jesus will visit him. As a matter of fact, we just pray, Father, thank you in Jesus' name, that you'd visit him and that he would come to you. What the Bible says is that iron sharpens iron. What we're supposed to do is we're supposed to sharpen each other's countenance and brighten our countenance, brighten the way that we see, the how we see, how we hear. And so with my life, my favorite, my, one of my favorite things to do is to do this right here, is to be with a driver or be with somebody one-on-one -on -one and just kind of share my heart, not in a, they're a bad person way, because it's not about being a bad person. 
It's just choices. So we make choices. But the choices that we make determines some people around us. It determines their eternity. And so we have, we have the ability to shift and change the atmosphere around us because of the Christ that's in us. But if we compromise in our walk, what happens is it's just a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. And before you know it, you've got the name of Jesus, but you're using it in vain. And it's no power to it at all. And when you find out what he did for you, and you find out your value before the Father, all of a sudden, to live is Christ and only Christ. And to die is gain. See, I have a window right now. And then I have eternity, forever. What are you going to do with this little tiny window that you got? It's a little window. Are you going to waste it on yourself? Are you going to waste it on shame? Are you going to waste it on guilt? Are you going to waste it on condemnation? Or do you really want something worth living for that's really worth dying for? All in or none in. Jesus said for him or against him, gather or scatter. He did not say come part way and straddle some fence that belongs to the devil. God's not looking for half-hearted followers, half-hearted Christians. When you get born again, you get a new heart. You can't live half-hearted. You can't. And you can't live not surrendered. We need to surrender. But when it comes to the gospel, this is not a private matter. Everybody lives, everybody dies, but no one really truly lives until they live for Him. All of you that are weighed down and burdened by life, come to me and I will give you rest. He didn't break your chains for you to put them back on once you leave the church. We can't afford to think like we used to think. And we definitely can't afford to think like the devil thinks, because the devil thinks guilty, ashamed, condemned because he knows that one day it's gonna be trumpet time. So he's trying to get Christians to live in fear. If we would just have confidence and believe that we are who God created us to be, we would no longer be shy. We would no longer be intimidated. When you find out what God thinks about you, it doesn't matter what the devil says, because that's a lie and this is true. And he's waiting for a Christian to step up and believe that they are who God created them to be. God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. God gave you a sound mind so that you could be confident that you are who he says you are. But if you never read and fellowship with God to find out who he says you are, you'll be what the devil thinks you are. Afraid.